That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Come to Daddy, which uh, is released on February 7th, 2020, uh, courtesy of Sabin Films. Uh, it premiered at the 2019 Tribeca Film Festival. It stars Elijah Wood. I think we should um, say the plot really fast, like before we do anything. Okay, sure. So we're going to spoil the film right away. So. Elijah Wood plays a gentleman named Mervil. Norval. Norval. Norval Greenwood. A 35-year-old man who has not seen his father for 30 years. Mm -hmm. He receives a letter from his father asking him to come visit him. Mm -hmm. So Norval, Norval? N Norval. <laughs> Norval lives in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. He uh, and his father lives in like some house, like in a secluded house by a lake in Oregon. Yeah. So Norval arrives and immediately it's weird. His mm -hmm. dad seems like he doesn't really want him there. His dad is obviously like a drunk, kind of mean to him. You know, within the first like 20 minutes, I would say it's, it's obvious like... It, it, it's He's brought there under false pretenses. It's almost immediately apparent. Well, immediately apparent. But, but the, the, yeah. Uh, Tensions rise. Mm -hmm. So, at one point, his dad attempts to attack him with a knife. The cleaver. With a cleaver. Mm -hmm. And, like, has a heart attack or a stroke or whatever and dies. Mm -hmm. So he dies within the first, like, 20 or 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But then we find out that that's not really his dad. Yeah. He's hearing noises. And has the common sense to like search the house and realizes that there's like a, like like a like a basement. Mm -hmm. And in the basement, his father. His is, real father. His is real dead. father is beaten and tied to, tethered. Um, but meanwhile, that also part of that why it takes so long for him to find him is uh, Elijah Wood's own sanity is kind of. Sure, sure. But so dubiously. He so then the father, the real father, explains that back in the day he was part of a group of four gentlemen mm -hmm. one of whom was the man who just died mm -hmm. um they were like crooks who decided they were going to kidnap like the daughter of like a vietnamese i think it was thai or a thai like uh, industrialist or something some but... rich thai man's daughter mm -hmm. um to get like a bunch of money which they get but Norval's dad keeps all of the money. Mm -hmm. So now his compadres come back and are torturing him to try to find out where the money is. Yes. So Norval discovers this. His dad tells him, like, you have to kill them or they're going to kill you and your mother. So he's successful in killing everyone. And the film ends with him and his dad sitting out by the lake. Okay. Who directed this film? Uh, this is the directorial debut of Ant Timpson, who is a producer uh, known for items such as the ABCs of Death uh, and Turbo Kid, uh, which was kind of a YA light Mad Max-ish film that was a, a bit of a success. The reason I wanted to say the plot first is mm -hmm. because I did not like this film. Um, but maybe <laughs> if that sounds good to you, then you will like it. I was very excited to see this film because I like Elijah Wood. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's fun to look at. He's a cute little guy. The trailer made it seem like it would be dark, macabre, the way it's being, funny. The way it's being marketed and certain some of the critical responses af after its premiere, I would say are highly exaggerated. It's not slick or macabre. Even the little um, one lines on the poster, like yeah. nonstop thrilling, macabre, it's none of those things. It's no. not really funny. No. There's one scene where Elijah Wood's character like stabs a man in the genitals with an ice pick. That's kind of the only real like, like, whoa moment. The, it, that's it. It knows. Like, that's the only shocking uh, moment of violence. I think it is a film that's wise enough to know that gratuitous violence should come in uh, small doses. But it's just one dose. There's the a brain that's exposed as well. There are there are a couple moments that you know. I, this film didn't go in any direction enough for me to be interested and there was like, the film was 90 some minutes and there was like a 30 minute period where I was just sitting there like, feeling like I was going to fall asleep. No, I agree. Uh, but I'm just saying at least it knows not to have a barrage of that. Sure. Because that sure. would have been... 
annoying as well. Uh, to me, watching this, I, I kept thinking of Tarantino uh, as somebody that's kind of picking and choosing and borrowing from a lot of influences that I could see at least and then like spitting them out in his own pastiche that doesn't really work. Like all of the dialogue, nothing is as smart or as funny as it should be no. or, or as subversive or anything. Um, I actually was reading, um, <clears throat> oh, so it, it, it was, it's based on a story by Ann Tim Timpson. The screenplay is by Toby Harvard who wrote The Greasy Strangler, which I'm not going to say is a good movie, but at least um, tries hard to be disgusting. Um, but reading about Timpson's uh, influences, he lists a whole bunch of things like uh, Straw Dogs, obviously, uh, the Peck Peckinpah film, which certainly his uh, penchant for violence would uh, be in keeping with that. But I, I thought it was interesting that he's, he noted The Servant by Joseph Lozier and The Birthday Party by Friedkin, which are both based on Harold Pinter plays. And Harold Pinter was a playwright that was known for what's he has, he's like, it's like Kafkaesque is a term, Pinteresque is a term, and it's known for describing a comedy of menace scenario, which is, I can see him trying to do that, but everything is too obvious. Like Pinter, Pinter is borderline boring, so if you're not invested in the performances, because what's going on you have to listen to in the dialogue, and this is very linear, it's very on, on the nose, like I was not surprised at all by anything in this. Yeah, I, I can see that. Uh, uh, and Elijah Wood is entertaining to watch. His character is so pathetic that it becomes... Yeah, that character, you know, it, it, he's a fitting because the character is supposed to be sort of this puny, pitiful guy who can't really defend himself and doesn't know how to speak up for himself. But it, it's so it's, it's to a point where it's annoying and he really doesn't ever stand up for himself. I mean, oh my god, just so many things don't make sense. Like the tra like the trajectory of like the last the, 15 minutes. The, there's several reveals that aren't really that revealing. Um, uh, you know, but just like when the ba like when the bad guy who's torturing his dad discovers that Norval is in the basement um, and he's like, I'm going to get you, I'm going to come back. And he just leaves them and doesn't lock them in the basement. And then, like, Norval follows the bad guy to a motel and, like, ends up, like, distracting the motel worker, stealing all of the keys, but that person never goes to look for mm -hmm. him. It just... There's no anxiety. There's no... There's movement. zero there's anxiety. No, there's no tension here. I don't... Like, I didn't really care. And I, I was very fidgety uh, throughout this film. Uh, I do want to briefly mention the uh, supporting cast members because they're notable people. Um, the Stephen McCaddy, actually, my favorite part of it, I guess, was Stephen McCaddy, who's the first person that he thinks is his father, the old drunk. Oh, I didn't like him. Oh, I thought he was kind of fun. This old leathery, sure. this old leathery reptile of a man who's just fucking abusive. Because that's the best. Yeah, but it's so over the top that it, it just leaves nothing to the like. There's no sure. way this is going to go well. So you're just, like, I'm just sitting there waiting for Well, yeah, and you're, you're waiting for the shoe to drop there. That's true. But I, I also enjoyed his performance. And I don't know if you remember Pontypool. He's a Canadian actor where he plays that radio DJ and that something is, there's a play. Oh, I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Uh, I like him. Um, Martin Donovan plays the real father, the one chained in the basement, who you probably remember as the pastor in Saved. Okay. He also wrote Death Becomes Her. He wrote Death Becomes yes, Her? Oh, a, that's what we should be talking about. Uh, that's a fun movie. He's, he's, he's often in Hal Hartley films. Um, he was fine. Michael Smiley is in almost every Ben Wheatley film. And Toby Harvard served as a storyboard artist on Free Fire, which I'm guessing is how they got Michael Smiley. I thought he was way over the top and not in a very fun way. Um, which one was he? He plays uh, the the one with the hair and the oh, bad the teeth. teeth. Yeah. That was a joke. Yeah, it, it just... It reminded me of that character from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 who scrapes his scalp with the... Yeah. But, like, but that character was creepy and, and like, ugh. And this guy is just, like, just dumb. It's not even fun, laughable. It's too broad. Yeah. He's too... Like... Uh, okay, it, actually... We don't have a lot of time and I want to devote time to the, the short, short film. So yes. I'm just going to say I would give this film two out of five stars. You know, on the way home I was thinking two and a half. Uh, two out of five I think is fair. So what we should be talking about is there was a short film that played before... That I wasn't aware of. To Daddy yeah. that I wasn't aware was going to happen. And it's called... Valerio's Day Off. 
And it's about a day jag- out. Day out. It, it's about a jaguar that escaped from an Atlanta zoo, which is a true story. New Orleans, New Orleans zoo. Um, but the jaguar's narrating like his events because he killed several of the other animals. He went on a in the rampage. Zoo. Yeah. I need to find this video. If I can find a link somewhere, I'll add it to the I description think, below. I think it's called uh, Michael Arcos is the. Uh, director uh, is a visual he, artist. He, he, he has this Jaguar sound and, uh, like, oh, it's so like good. fucking Werner Herzog. It's so good. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I could have watched There are a lot of little details like when there's inconsistencies in what the reporters are reporting versus what he did that I think is so fucking funny. Yeah. Yeah, that was, I could have watched the whole feature of that. Um, I'm sad though. I do like Elijah Wood and he is fun to watch on screen and he was at the screening We were like he was in the theater taking pictures with people. So he seems proud of his little picture I'm confused. I don't understand what this movie's trying to be I was hoping when I was sitting in the theater like oh, this is gonna be good It's going to be batshit fucking crazy. Yeah, and it isn't it's just well, kind of like God, even that term is starting to like batshit crazy I know I know just, like trying so hard. I, but. I was hoping after the preview that it would be there was this 2013 film called The Wait directed by M. Blash with Jenna Malone and Chloe Sevigny and it's about these sisters whose mother dies and they leave her in the body they leave her body in the house because they think she's going to come back to life okay. so it's this whole that has a creepy that's a creepy comedy of menace film um, yeah I just this just felt like a, a, a bunch of dudes got together and came up with an idea that, yeah like the man what's his name Ant Ant Timpson like he was drinking, probably smoking, like had this idea. Maybe he's friends with Elijah Wood and was like, wouldn't it be crazy? If oh, I think somebody's him? father died and they had this and they kept the body. Yeah, you can see where the origins of this story. Which came. could have been good. It could have been good. It just, it could have been even, I don't mind it being obvious. It could have been a great beat. It's, these are classic film noir tropes. This of yeah, stolen it's identities. Not, it's that, not campy. It's not fun. It's not. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Anyway, I'm done. Mm. Okay. Toodaloo.